That's why it is in a critical time for the European leaders to quickly come out of solution. This issue could continue to affect Italy, which is one of the major countries in Eurozone. Also, it's the third largest bond market. Since you introduced this Eurozone system, it is the first real test. Uh, group of countries facing a very high debt overhang, which requires deleveraging. However, it is not that easy to see, so okay, we either provide them liquidity uh, or provide them uh, 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 what's say bailout, because neither at this point can easily solve the solution. Number one, given the debt overhang, liquidity only buys time, but only accumulate more debt so make the debt overhang worse. Secondly, all these debt overhang countries have to do fiscal austerity measures to prevent a further accumulation of debt. However, fiscal austerity means cutting spending, raising uh, revenue, so it drags down growth. So in terms of debt sustainability, it's still making them, could be making them worse. So in the short term, liquidity provides a support, a buying time, but fundamental solution comes to the next two. One is you need to have sufficient amount of money to reduce the overhand of certain countries' sovereign debt. Also, you need to have sufficient amount of money to ring fence the banks, because banks are the buyer of this bad debt. But in order to get this money, Either you come from Germany, uh, Netherlands, the surplus country, or you will try to get the market to come, basically called the crowd in, the private sector, to help you. But you need to give a very clear long-term map to show a new European Union will be very different, or Euro Eurozone uh, policy will be very different than the previous one. So every investor will be assured the money they invested or help to resolve the current issue will eventually to have a benefit or have a safe return of their capital. So in that case, current policy of the European leaders is still feel for far short of what the market is looking for. The fundamentals of the weakness in the previous or the current Eurozone is you have a monetary union but without a fiscal union, without a political body which can quickly build a consensus to resolve any crisis or major policy issue. Also the banking system is still very much in the national government or national central bank hand. But national central bank cannot be the last resort because they don't have any power to print the money. ECB only have one objective, price stability. So basically all the banks have no last resort to protect them. Only the government can protect them. But for these high debt country, government already facing their own problem. Even if they say, I guarantee that these through central bank of their deposits, these depositors do not have confidence that say you have the money to really guarantee me. That's why we see Cap, uh, deposit outflow already massively from uh, Greeks, but also from Spain, Portugal. So this issue could continue to affect Italy, which is one of the major country in Eurozone. Also, it's a third largest bond market. So that ramification will be very significant. Uh, it will be very difficult for the EU countries to come up with sufficient money to save a country like Italy. That's why it is in a critical time for the European leaders to quickly come out of solution of a combination of a holistic approach, liquidity support, uh, bailout funds to be sufficient, how to ring fence banks, how to revamp 
ECB's role to become somewhat a last resort, but most critically, underpinning a future of Eurozone, you need a roadmap how to address fiscal union, how to address somewhat a political consensus building process, and how to have a Euro area bank regulation and uh, system of monitoring the risks. You know, basically comes down to two solutions. One is for the Eurozone eventually come down to a smaller core group. Uh, Greece could let it go. Uh, the other view is to still retain the same size because the alternative of spell out one member or allow one member to exit is too much of a collateral damage. So at this point, two, both solutions are very painful solutions or involve very large costs. Uh, allowing one of the country or a number of countries to exit the Eurozone probably involves a much larger upfront cost. Now, drag them on means a transfer from the core surplus country to this deficit country for a number of years. Uh, both are not very pretty solutions, but you don't have other choices. Mm -hmm. So it is a political decision at this point how to go about it. Yeah. Usually, we, usually we look for decisions like either in politics or in the legal system that lies uh, on ground of that. Um, as lay people or as citizens like me, we sometimes feel paralyzed. Uh, what can I, being from Europe, besides electing the right party, but I mean we elect, we are electing them on other terms, like what can we do? One element um, for the politicians to well educate their population, not only their, you know, the parliament or etc., but also for the population to understand how much of the European system is already interlinked together. Uh, in order to buy in all these uh, uh, citizens' support, this communication is very important. Um, Maybe it has been done, uh, maybe I have not really seen it, uh, but this is critical. From this, today's discussion with the Germans, it seems like this kind of education or communication with the general public about why we will have to, may, we may have to bail out uh, Greece or Portugal, is not, seems not have not been done enough. Uh, so the public still feel that it's just we throw good money to bail out the bad, bad uh, you know, to chase the bad money. Uh, why uh, they spend and end up the debt have to be paid by us. But if you look at more of a longer term, it's for the success of the Euro project, for European emerge out of this a stronger new Eurozone, there is cost. Mm. The initial design has flaws, mm. ended up this, so you have to address the flaws, but also you have to bear whatever the mistake you made at the first place. Yeah. From the Chinese perspective, uh, what role has the Eurozone in general for you? Well, Eurozone still, all together, is still the largest economy in the world if you put them all together and Euro Europe is our largest trading partner so in a way European issue is not just a European issue it's a global issue including it is directly or indirectly direct impact probably less but the indirect impact to the rest of the world will be quite significant through both the trade channel and also through the capital market so at this point i think all investors are very concerned that's why you see if the european debt issue suddenly evaporates into a negative direction or the equity market reacts in the same direction risk averse Uh, money will flow to like a US uh, dollar bond, government bonds, these safe heavens. Uh, so that means all investors are concerned about the systemic risk. Mm -hmm. And never mention about the trade if Europeans economy really go to a recession. Global trade will go down by a notch.